So this next particle system we're going to look at is super spray. I'm going to click and drag out a emitter. And with this emitter, you'll see it's different. When I drag on a timeline, you'll see we're generating one stream of particles straight up in the air. So let's take a look at some of these settings. So with this, we have the axis. And if I change that, it moves it off the axis right click to bring that back, our spread. So if I spread it out and then I hold down Alt and rotate, you'll see it's just spreading from one dimension. So it's moving along the X. So I'm going to go down and click the second spread and now we're getting more of a three-dimensional spread. And let's change this to mesh so we can see a little mesh representation of these particles. Uh, use rate, let's go to total and let's put, I'm going to say two, 3,000 particles. So we get quite a few of these. And then let's go in and look at some of these other settings that we have. It. So we have our particle type and here I can pick cube. So let's take a look at our cube. Get little cubes. Facing. With this it's going to create a um, single polygon and then as you move the camera the polygon should update to the camera and rotate and for some reason it's just not doing that. I'm getting display issues with this. Uh, constant should be doing the same. We have sphere, a tetra, triangles, six-sided, and we can do instance geometry. So I'm going to come in, go to my create menu, and then change this back to standard primitive, pick teapot, draw a little teapot out, go back to my modifier tab, select my super spray, and then when I come down, I'm going to pick Instance Geometry. And now, under Instance Parameters, I'm going to pick the teapot. And now we're generating lots of teapots. And this is what I mean by it's really good for something like motion graphics. You can do some interesting, fun things with it, um, but you're not going to get a photorealistic look. So we have our Instance Geometry, and now we're going to go back to Standard particles. Let's try it. It's facing. It was working a couple seconds ago and now it's just not facing. Let me put a camera in. Okay, so I have a camera in. And now if you look at the particles as I rotate, you'll see that even though it's a plane, it's always facing the camera. And you normally don't have to put a camera in. I'm just getting weird display issues. It wasn't showing geometry a second ago. I'm going to bring this back to a default, so I'm just going to delete this one. Okay, so I'm just starting with a default super spray. And we're going to take a look at space warps. So I just have a particle being emitted. I'm going to go in and... change it to mesh, and then say use 2,000 particles, and I'm just going to leave everything else. So we just get a nice 60 frames of em emitting particles. And that's what it looks like. So right now it's shooting straight up in the air and I'm just going to add a little bit of tilt to this and you'll see it's just shooting at an angle. We want to put some forces onto this so I'm going to go into my create menu I'm going to go to space warps and we have forces and deflectors so I'm going to use the two of these I'm going to go back to my create menu real quickly and just put a ground plane. 
So I'm going to click and drag a plane out. Move it right above the grid so visually it's a little cleaner. Grab my super spray, scoot it over to the side. And the particles are the same color as my plane. So I do want to change the color of my plane. Let's go with the lighter gray. So I just have this particle shooting in the air. And we want to have it. Let's make uh, cubes. And I'll make them a little bit larger. That'll work. So we're going to go to Forces, Create, Space Warps, Forces, and I'm going to add some gravity. So I'm just going to come over here and click and drag out a gravity. And right now it's not affecting our super spray. So I'm going to go and select the super spray, go to space warps, and click and drag to the gravity and release. It turns yellow uh, when you're hovering and it's selectable. And now you'll see that they're falling. So we have in our gravity, let's turn off the space warps, we have some choices here. So we have our strength, and I can increase the strength or decrease it. We can add decay. And then we can also change it to something like spherical. And then it's a spherical influence on the object. So if I play this forward and then move my sphere, and let's just take my decay away. And then wherever the sphere is, it's affecting the pull, and it's just going to wrap around. So I'm just going to bring this gravity back to a plane. And then it just pulls it down. The, uh, we don't have that same effect on the movement as we move the, the gravity. So just place it someplace out of the way. And what I want to do is have the spray hit this plane and bounce off. We're going to go back into our Create menu, into our Space Warps, and change it from Forces to Deflector. And what I'm going to use is a U Deflector. So I'm going to click and drag out the U Deflector, right click to end that operation, select my Super Spray, grab my Space Warp uh, link, and then link to the U Deflector. And now I have to tell the U deflector, so I'm going to turn off the space warp, select it, and tell it what object we're going to be using. So we're going to use this plane as the object that's deflecting. And now you'll see when the particles hit the surface, they bounce. We do have lots of adjustments we can make, so how much we bounce. variation percentage on that bounce, chaos within that bounce, friction, um, and then inherent velocity. So you can get fun little animations. And with this, it is penetrating a little bit. So in many cases, um, the reason is it's going with the center of the object and reading that. So in many cases, you actually might want to grab a deflector and just put slightly above the surface instead of using the U deflector. But that's your basic space warp.